Hello to everybody. We are here at the Achinga and uh, at the Stratego Group uh, booth. Uh, this place is hosting everyday uh, broadcasting, a daily broadcasting from the Super Content Group at, by Drupa. And uh, here I, I am Alexia Rizzi, uh, editor in chief for uh, um, stampamedia.net and Il Polygrafico. And with me, uh, Naresh Kanna from uh, uh, Packaging South Asia and Indian Print and Publisher. Hi, Naresh. Hi. It's our first day in Drupa. What about? What the feeling? What, uh, what do you say? Well, it's been a long time. Um, I was hoping that. In 2020, that would be my last Drupa, but I had to hang on another four years to have my last Drupa, which is my 10th. And uh, it's nice to be here. And I think it's very uh, interesting to be here this time as part of a trade magazine group. I think that in the past we have not worked uh, together enough. And when you see uh, Heidelberg and Canon consolidating and other people consolidating, there's an obvious need for the media also to work together a bit, I think. So, and also that we can learn so much from each other. And also when we come and go uh, and we don't share about our country, our culture, I think we're missing out on an opportunity. So I, I welcome the whole idea of the Super Content Group and I'm looking for some little excitement. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. It's funny to work together. We mix our culture, we mix our ideas, projects and force because it's very hard to, to work at Drupa because long work, you run up and down from a, a conference to another one, to an interview to another one. But it's nice also to have all these media now that are at our disposal to spread all the news in every time, always connected, is nice. Yes, and our audience expects from us video, you know, it's a TikTok world. So we cannot, uh, and how do we do that? So for that, we need to help each other because it requires professionalism, skills, uh, equipment, technology, uh, human resource. Uh, so th th one of the ways to do it, as we are trying to do it, is by cooperating. So I think that's very interesting. I think we should uh, tell our audience a little bit about what it feels like to be back at Drupa. What, how, what is your impression of the first day? Uh, my impression is that uh, it's very different from the other Drupas, of course, uh, for a lot of uh, uh, point of views. Uh, the first one is that we heard about uh, more uh, talking more about uh, software and uh, cloud, uh, artificial intelligence, um, and so something less uh, material than uh, before. I, I remember that at my first Drupa, I saw uh, the, a big, big machine for the newspaper printing and now <laughs> they disappeared so <laughs> it's very different quite quite a big change yes quite a big change and of course quite a lot of focus on packaging yes, yeah, yeah. yes. that is there yeah i think also that this is a very quiet drupa so far compared to earlier drupa there is i think a feeling of slightly less crowd uh, it's easier to move around in a way it's calmer um, People don't seem to be as much of a rush. Um, and I find, since we are journalists, sometimes people were not very interested in talking to us because we are not customers. Mm -hmm. But this time I find they are more keen to talk to journalists. Yeah. And uh, it's a sign that it's a quieter time for them and they are also in a little bit of trouble maybe. Yes, and they also, I think that they understand the, uh, um, that is very important to uh, talk to journalists in order to spread their uh, products and, and uh, projects and so on. And it was nice also to have uh, the interviews, uh, video interviews uh, with a lot of customers. It was nice. And what about uh, technology? Uh, did you notice something in this first day? Something that attracts your uh, uh, curiosity? Yes, I mean, there is, I think, uh... There is basically, to my point of view, there is a shift. That means the, the mystique of the technology coming from only Europe and North America is going away. 
I think technology has been a great leveler, not only for printing and packaging converters, but also for manufacturers and entrepreneurs. So you find many more entrepreneurs and manufacturers at this Drupa from China, from India, you have like 72 to 74 exhibitors, and you find teams of young engineers with startups mm -hmm. uh, who are going all over the world. They're aggressive. They are taking advantage of the fact uh, that in our country we have cheap energy, we have good human resource, we have good software skills. Uh, so, so I think there is a shift in the understanding that all everything must come from Europe or America. Mm -hmm. That there will now be uh, also a challenge from the East, from the Chinese, the Indians, the Indonesians, the Vietnamese. So I think that's, that is also, uh, there is an undercurrent of that. Mm -hmm. And you see even in the fact that it's Canon collaborating with Heidelberg. Yes. And the biggest shareholder in Heidelberg is Masterwork, which is a Chinese company. So these are all reflections that, that, the, that the, the mystical power of the Europeans and the Americans is, is waning perhaps. Yeah. You, it, this, this Drupa could be a reflection of that also. Yes, in general, in culture and in economy and also in our sector. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes, it's a good, uh, good reflection. And in terms of uh, pure technologies, what, what is uh, the news, the real news? Well, see, the real news, I think, also is going to be prob problematic because a lot of it is automation uh, and people are speaking of modular automation. There's some very interesting, I, the, the, this is actually the fair is about communication. Mm -hmm. What is really happening is not a techni technological war, but an information war. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if you see some of the metaphors and the language used by some of the big guys like uh, Heidelberg are actually not very creative. They are quite stale in trying to say this is new, this is innovative, this is revolutionary. I don't think they can get away with that anymore. So, the, 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 uh, the, but the other way of talking, the, the let us have a symphony, let us treat every technology as an instrument or uh, have a, a tempo, have a harmony. I think that will, so the way of communication in the information war is going to be very important. Okay. Because I feel that if the manufacturers think that us journalists are a little bit stupid, mm -hmm. that they can just get away with saying things um, yeah. and that we will repeat them or we will praise them or we will say their things are wonderful, I think they're mistaken. Yeah. I think uh, we have been around long enough yeah, yes. uh, <laughs> to see that uh, not all of this is real. Yeah. And, and information war is not enough. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also you cannot just build equipment for uh, Europe and North America because they're ready to buy equipment at a high price with automation mm -hmm. because the larger market has shifted to the east yes. where they are much more uh, conscious about the capital cost of things you know I think this is why the Indians are very uh, interested in the Italian equipment yes. because they find it more cost effective than the German equipment okay. so, so this I think price is not an irrelevant issue nor is it a negative issue mm -hmm. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an important issue for the uh, visitors to Drupa, the printers and the packaging companies that come here to look for technology and to buy. For them, uh, cost of money is, is, is an issue, price is an issue. And uh, unlike in some of the Western countries where there are huge government subsidies on, on finance, you know, zero interest. Uh, so it is, this is something where the manufacturers will have to keep in account yes. and, uh, and not build for the short term very high prices, but built for the longer term at a more sustainable... I mean, yeah. sustainability is not only environment, it is also about sustaining business. Ah, yes, a social and a economical, yes. And uh, you are talking about sustainability. Uh, we see less green, uh, less greenwashing, let's say. Yeah. Do you notice that? Yes, uh, uh, because we have seen there is a retreat recently. Okay. Companies like uh, Unilever, uh, their investors in America have said, Stop talking so much about green. Mm -hmm. Let's push the target of 25 to 26. From 50% recyclable, let's push it to 33% recyclable. Mm -hmm. Stop talking about fair trade. Stop talking about equal wages for those people out there. You know? Uh, so, so there is actually a retreat from green, uh, from the investors. And, 
and coming from India, I can tell you, we feel a little bit abandoned that, uh, you know, these people said this 2025 sea flex and this rule coming in and that rule coming in and decarbonizing. And we have been working on that. Yes. Uh, and these people are now retreating. <laughs> and they're not ready to pay more for <laughs> yes. uh, recycled resin and things like that. So there is a crisis. Yes. There is a crisis in the climate issues mm -hmm. uh, where there is a, we feel that there is going to be a, there is a retreat already. While in our country we are already starting to implement uh, penalties and uh, extended use of responsibility. It's already the law. Of course. And what about uh, industry find point zero? Um, do you think that uh, is uh, something uh, mm, true or to put uh, the man at the center and the machine uh, cooperating or it's something like a dream? Well, I'm sorry, but I have a little bit of a kind of a um, difficult view on that. Okay. In the sense that I think we haven't, first of all, been able to do Industry 4.0. And it's nice that they has, somebody has figured out that we are talking about man at the center of the loop. First, they were saying that the loop and the man or the human. Uh, but I th it's nice. But I think they have sort of lost sight of the fact that now we are all... Um, uh, we are in a situation of cloud feudalism. Mm -hmm. Like the, the Greek uh, economist Yanis Varoufakis says that we are all now working for Amazon or uh, Google or Facebook um, and or for our bank. We do the work. The bank doesn't do any work now. We do everything. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, even for the railway, we do everything. There's no human being to even sell a ticket or to tell us where to go. Also in the hotellerie so, and so yeah, on is so, going. So the human has become very missing. Yeah. And we are now just working for the cloud. We are working for the algorithm. Yeah. So I, I think that we have to take some of this with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. And we need more human beings involved. Yes. And yeah. even in all print production, you need the right human intervention at the appropriate time. The human being, it's, it's good yeah. they're talking about human being at the center. That is needed. But I think they are maybe paying only lip service to that. <laughs> okay, I hope they mean it. Yeah. You know, that this is not just uh, uh, totally, uh, you know, an afterthought for public relations. Or, mm -hmm. uh, we have to evolve in this way, of yeah. course. And the print quality, it was uh, one uh, focus of uh, printers, of uh, people uh, selling uh, printing machine. Is still there? I think it's still there. I think it's still there. And I think that was the big defect in digital printing for so many years. Mm -hmm. Like Landa is lucky there was no Drupa in 2020. <laughs> yes. He got eight years to fix it. <laughs> yes. And this morning in his uh, press conference, he was honest enough to admit <laughs> that my technology did not work. <laughs> and now it works. And now it works. So I think that is a accomplishment to him, but it also shows the amount of time it takes yes. to make this technology work. Of course. And uh, you have to come to many Drupas before something works. And then sometimes you find out it may be working, but it's not needed anymore. <laughs> yes. So, it's, uh, yeah. so there is a problem with new technologies, whether they are innovations that actually work or innovations that actually are a disaster. Okay. Or, or is it is not ready? They introduce, but... <laughs> it's, it's not viable as a, uh, to buy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Maybe a few people can buy. Uh, okay. Uh, but but okay. it would not uh, develop a large footprint going forward, perhaps. What what can we say to conclude this uh, discussion? Well, I think it's been lovely talking to you, and I think <laughs> it's uh, uh, that's what the industry needs. It needs human beings talking on the spot about what they see, sharing. Uh, being honest as they can and uh, I think that if we can bring our experience and as you saw even yesterday's press conference at Heidelberg you know we had seen that movie before yeah <laughs> and uh, now they're doing the movie again now the only issue is whether the first time the movie was a comedy or a horror movie <laughs> and so I think 
um, I think to conclude, if we can develop this show on a nightly basis or a daily basis yeah. and get it out there, it'll be quite an interesting put, achievement, you know. With, yeah. uh, uh, and putting here on this table new new information yeah, uh, and yeah. uh, because and there's new lots content. of us. Yeah, there's yeah. lots of us, and, and we will uh, invite all all the other colleagues of the yeah, super content group. I, I think we are an interesting lot. Yes, of course. Okay. Many thanks, Naresh. It was so nice to talk to you and uh, see you at the next uh, daily upgrade to the with the super content group. Bye bye.